ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bastion of Twilight. This is a successful kill of the first boss, Harfus Wormbreaker. I've put this one on normal speed so you can see the fight as normal with a successful execution. I've also left Vent on and I have left the sound on so you can hear some of the voice acting, of which there is a little bit. Righto, ladies and gents, you've seen the setup from the Wipathon 3000. It's not particularly difficult. You've got two tanks, you have two healers, and 60 PS. This can be considered the quick guide if you just need something for reference, as opposed to Wipathon, which is a learning aid. We'll have your head, all of them. This fight has the Slate Dragon, so you've got to be a little bit concerned about that, and the fact, of course, that you do get that very unpleasant paralyze attack that he has going on there so nuke the dragon as much as humanly possible ignore the main boss for the time being although by the looks of it your mirror images won't because they are dumb needless to say any damage is good damage on him but you do want the dragon down because once the dragon is down the boss is going to take a damage debuff which means you can deal more damage to him and you're not going to have to deal with this nonsense which is the paralyze watch out for the switch over right here with the slate dragon up you're going to have to switch between two tanks because you get this stacking healing debuff called malevolent strikes that is actually put on by the boss and not by the dragon but the malevolent strikes ability is given to the boss by the dragon and it doesn't go away of course watch out for the fireballs when you can but you're not going to be able to dodge them most of the time they are too fast and also you get this aoe flame breath every now and again it doesn't do a huge amount of damage but it is a complete pain in the ass spell pushback as you might notice can be avoided by the use of concentration aura and by using anti-pushback talents in this case as the mage i'm using burning soul the first tier fire talent which i would recommend to basically everyone here and you can obviously see why that is okay slate dragon is down so you can get a little bit more damage on worm breaker what you want to do now is get your tank to start dragging worm breaker over to the cage now the cage at the side has some whelps in it bear in mind that in your variation you might not end up getting the whelps you could potentially get a second drake so this fight does change around with the whelps, you're just going to have to drop as much AoE on them as possible. They do have a raid-wide debuff, which reduces all incoming damage by 2,000 or so. It's not very nice. In this case, we just drop everything we've got on them. We use a couple of rings of frost, although that's really not necessary. They don't tend to move around a lot, so you'd have to aim that quite carefully. It's nice to reduce the incoming damage on the tank a little bit if you can drag them through the ring of frost that's going to freeze them. Drop some blizzards in the middle, just any area of effect you happen to have. If you happen to be playing a fire mage and you do have the impact talent, then you might want to use it to spread things like combustion as well as of course your ignites and your living bomb to as many targets as possible for the most effective aoe drop a blast wave in there when you can i wouldn't bother spamming flame strike it's not a particularly effective area of effect attack and it's way too expensive to spam anyway just get a blast wave down there with improved flame strike so you've got one ticking off on them and then drop your blizzards for other classes of course just use the most effective aoe you have without draining the hell out of your mana because there is a bit of endurance involved in this fight you can see he's got an awful lot of health although now we can start to hit him like an absolute truck we've got this 100 damage debuff that's been put on him so if you like big crits that's exactly what you're going to see particularly of course if you're frost or if your arcane is a mage and no doubt with other classes you're going to have lots of abilities that will give you the big fat numbers there you go 63,000 crit that's what i'm talking about so bring him down at this point there's not a lot you really need to worry about right here until you get to the phase where he starts spinning around and honestly that doesn't even do that much damage anyway just bear in mind by that point your healers are probably fairly worn out they've used an awful lot of mana they may have popped cooldowns in the first phase because it is very tricky with the tank swapping and the amount of damage that's coming through from the paralyze so if you can avoid taking damage from the spinny thing you want to avoid taking damage from the spinny thing if you are melee you're gonna have to go in there because of the enraged timer the enraged timer will kill everyone incredibly fast if you reach it as to what it is Bearing in mind there are no boss timers for this, yes, I would give a rough estimate of it being around 8 minutes. No doubt the timer will come in with deadly boss mods by the time that you guys that don't have the beta are doing this. This will be all mapped out for you. Those of you who are doing the beta well, enjoy the experience of doing things with very little documentation and in a state of constant flux and change. 
Now, in this phase, it might be the time when you want to start burning your bloodlusts, your time warps, but really, it doesn't honestly matter all that much. Personally, I would do so in a phase that allows you to focus as much DPS on the boss as humanly possible. The spinny phase, I would not do that because you're going to have to move away from it. That means you're not going to get the best possible benefit from Bloodlust slash Time Warp. It's usually best to do it before he does this because then you could just stand there because you know you're not going to be taking any damage and you can just wail on the guy. While this bit must look fairly simplistic, just bear in mind that once he does do the spin, those Malevolent Strike debuffs can actually be applied to anyone that gets hit by that. You're going to see me get hit a couple of times by it, and that's going to provide the stacks. There you go. There's one stack, two stack, and three. That's not going to help the healers at all. Admittedly, there's not a lot of raid damage going on besides that. You have to deal with the occasional flame breath from the Proto Behemoth in the back there, and you're going to get hit by those fireballs every now and again. Honestly, again, just try and avoid it because your healers are going to shout at you and the worst thing is your healers running out of mana at this stage and then you end up losing people and you don't have the DPS to finish the fight. But there you go, Harfus Wormbreaker is down. Yes. Down. Nice. Um, nothing for me. <laughs> Finding fate and chaos intertwined. That's probably the hardest variation. It is a good start for 10 boss. It's not amazingly difficult, but bear in mind the heroic mode is probably going to be an absolute nightmare. The next boss we're going to be showing you is going to be a pair of very argumentative Twilight Dragons. And they, on the other hand, are Hell Incarnate. So very, very good. My name's been Total Biscuits with yeah, my help. Blood Elf pre made. Yeah, oh, God. God, I hate it so very much. And this has been Betamus Testamus, the beta testing guild here in a 10-man raid of the Bastion of Twilight. I'll see you next time. Not gonna wave, because I'm awesome. <laughs>